<laughs> All righty, guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to In Between Pages with James Lott Jr. I am James Lott Jr. of JLJ Media, and that is my online network. Welcome to another special edition of this. We're talking to people who are... <laughs> Thanks, that's my laughter. See, All righty, guys. Hello. Turn that off. There we go. I'm learning as I go along <laughs> as I do these shows. Uh, welcome to the show, you guys. And I love bringing on people who are creatives. That's the whole point about this show. It's all about creatives. Um, and these two creatives, they, okay, they have backgrounds that are, are varied and wonderful. One has his awards sitting right there, BMI award-winning Berkeley College of Music student, a graduate. We love that. Uh, jazz pianist. And then we have someone who um, actually has an album I was listening to called More Love. I was listening, I was listening to that actually recently. Uh, she's a violinist among other things. These are, just, these are just like little tidbits. We're gonna find out more about them. But they've composed many things. And there's a series called Ginny and Georgia that's on Netflix that I've watched. It's 10 episodes, uh, coming of age, kind of a coming age kind of story. Varied characters, uh, funny, serious, all mixed together. And they're scoring that. And there is a soundtrack release, digital soundtrack release happening manana tomorrow. So it's about that also. Help me welcome Ben Brumfield and Lily Hayden. Hello, you guys. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, first of all, everybody, subscribe, like, comment. I'm here at JLJ Media. It's my <laughs> company. Please go ahead and subscribe, share the love. Um, and you'll be able to find this also on all streaming platforms, audio-wise, too. So some of you like to listen and not look. So you can listen also and hear our beautiful voices talking about the process. Um, everyone, so now you guys, I've only talked to one other composer. Um, who does film and TV. He's my friend, uh, Kurt Farquhar. He's been around for 30 years in the business. Him and his brother both been around for 30 years. They scored lots of TV shows and stuff. But I didn't ask him this question. I'm gonna ask you both, I'm gonna start out, gonna start out with a big question first to each of you. What do you think in your experience of doing TV and film, what is one key element do you think is that leads to a successful scoring of a TV series? one key element hmm. to me the melody is you know the, the theme is the is the key once you have the theme then you can navigate through the drama and the comedy and the you know the subtleties and the you know and the you know and and kind of you get your palette you get your score you get your your you know anyway so the for me it's the theme that unlocks everything hmm. okay. I think, yeah, I think that's really big. And that ties into, um, I think efficiency is super important specifically for television because it moves, it clips along. Um, it's one of the things I love about working on TV shows is uh, the rhythm of the show itself, the rhythm of the schedule, how everybody is sort of on this like forward march. We got to get through this, we're doing this one. And it's sort of like this team sport feeling um, and so for me, and this actually ties into what Lily was saying too, because the, having a great theme is part of that efficiency because that theme, as she said, unlocks things. Um, you know, under mapping out what, how you're going to approach the episodes in terms of like how you, um, how, how the sections are organized, how the episode is organized, like this theme that you establish here gets used over there. It's all related to that. So there's this sort of like efficiency of creativity, I guess is kind of the way to do it. Finding ways to get yourself to be so creative on command um, and produce the volume of music that you have to do in the short amount of time that you have to do it. I was gonna say, that's two big things, right? I mean, it's, it's like, okay, it's not just like one long scene, you know, per, you know, per, it's like you're, you're just many, there's multiple scenes, it's multiple episodes, like I said, there's 10 episodes of this, you got to come up with something for each scene, correct? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Totally. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, wh when it came to Ginny and Georgia, there's a lot of really great pop songs and stuff they're using throughout the show, too. So, um, which also presented some of its own challenges because we really had to match the energy of like this incredibly, you know, brilliant pop music that they're using all over the that show. had already been mastered and you know heavily right. produced and then yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then also there were a bunch of songs that they you know needed to replace that they couldn't afford so we had to like you know suddenly create pop songs i've made a bunch of uh alternative you know pop and rock records so this is in my vocabulary but still it you know usually you're you know, when you're making a record, you've got a little time. This is like 
bam. Uh, and, and like, oh, go on. And I hadn't, uh, I'd only done additional music for television before. I had, my career as, as a composer, film composer, yeah, film, it's been yeah. all films. Um, yeah. And so when I got with Ben, uh, he was like, when he said he really liked the pressure of, <laughs> he liked the schedule. It's like, yeah. all right, well, you're my man. If I was ever going to do this, this you're the one to jump in with. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I, Pat, I, well, I, um, <laughs> I just, now I have a new thought, which is that I, I used to say, I have said to people in the past that I moved to Los Angeles for the deadlines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I like that. Is, what I mean by that is this. Um, if I didn't have those deadlines, I don't know what I would write. I don't know what I would write. I've written like in the last few years, let me think, when I when I sort of tally up, because I, I do a lot of animated television, which is basically wall-to-wall -wall music. Yeah. I mean, I've written hundreds of minutes of music in the last few years, um, probably over a thousand minutes of music. And it's like the idea that if it wasn't for that pace, that clip, those deadlines, that like, I don't know what I would have written at all, you know? Um, so it's kind of like, we have a little bit of a yin and yang thing, a lot of ways, Lily and I, but one of them is that because she's, comes from a recording, like making records and stuff is such a different uh, mindset and one that I really admire. And also, I'm also into it. I just, earlier in my life, definitely, I had no idea what, what kind of music I, like what is my voice, whatever, but I knew that I liked scoring drama, telling the story with music and, uh, and writing instrumental music, which is all a big part of this. So, um, so yeah, those deadlines, give them to me. Uh, I was, first I want to say, we all got the memo, we're all wearing blue. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, we didn't plan this, folks. This is not planned, but we're all in sync. I guess it's just blue today. I don't know. It should be a theme cool. moving forward now. Everybody on every show should wear the same color. <laughs> I, they said it complements each other, right? It complements yeah. each other. Uh, yeah. look, right now it's just cold for me. It's cold in LA. So I had to fight to my house was cold, so I had to like put, put this on. Um, that's why I'm freezing. It's cold for LA. For LA, as I, as I said, for LA, man. I was trying to <laughs> watch this somewhere else. We're like, it's not that cold. Well, for LA, it is cold. I live in Inglewood by the water over here, and I'm like, it's in the airport. It's cold over here. I'm right near Inglewood too. Oh, you're oh, hey, yeah. hi neighbor. Yeah, I'm down here. I'm down here. So I, I was in Culver City for breakfast this morning. We were freezing, seeing outside freezing. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was gonna be that cold today. <clears throat> So I'm wearing this, but um, but I actually want to go to Lily really quick because I went because I put out albums too, and I'm working on my next album right now, and, and it's a whole different process. When I did my first score, my first soundtrack, it was just so different because I'm actually watching this movie, which I had a preview of first, and I'm watching the scenes that you want me to score. And it's different than having your own album. Your own album is just it's your feeling, whatever you're feeling at that moment you want to create. So how so what is that kind of how's that like for you when you're doing film plus Versus your, you brought your first album was six years recently. I mean, that was your first album, solo album. Mm -hmm. It comes out tomorrow as well, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've made uh, six solo albums and then a couple of other collaborative albums, um, and uh, they uh, and kind of you know asking the angels to come you know sing to you yes. and then uh, yes. what a, you know what is it that I like what is it and but I've also before I made my solo albums and actually throughout my life I've collaborated with a lot of wonderful artists so i've gotten to play and sing with herbie hancock uh, jimmy I page know. and robert plant uh, roger waters parliament funkadelic um and uh, and i just think of dialogue like the lead singer honestly mm -hmm. so uh so you know you don't step on the lead singer you support the lead singer and uh, i was part of hans zimmer's team for for several another years another composer um, legend um, <laughs> And um, and I asked him what, you know, I said, Hans, what, you know, what's one nugget? What would you say? What would be the like the thing that you'd like to impart to me? Uh, and he said something that was taught to him early on, which was fall in love with your star. Basically, just make sure that you're so that you are making your star shine. Um, and that's what I do when I play with other people, you know, when you're collaborating. You, have, you give them the respect and you listen and you you move around them to make them sound amazing you know and that's what I do when I'm producing my own albums and then of course when we when I got to uh, it, so it was very natural uh, to to support to fall in love with the star that makes it, it's, sense. it's all connected basically. no it is no it is that, that totally it completely makes sense because you're trying you you're trying to make everybody whatever project you're working on you want it to look and sound good I mean that's mm -hmm. kind of the through line right so whether it's your project, a collaboration, 
a movie score, film score, TV. It doesn't matter. It's like you're trying. You want to make sure that it's because, you know, the wrong music and the oh wrong God, yeah. key, we've all heard it. We've yep. heard some. Yeah, oh, and some oh, good oh, movies, too. Yeah. Yeah, good, good mood. No, seriously, I, I'm saying that. I mean, I've heard some stuff. Because, you know, we, you know, us musicians hear things differently than regular folks watching a movie. Um, I've, I've heard some stuff going, that was the wrong, oh, what, <laughs> what is going on here? Because it can, it can, undermine, it can undermine that scene, that emotional yeah, totally. Totally. I, and, uh, but then it also, sometimes it really makes, uh, what's so interesting, because I've had that feeling sometimes when I've scored for a director and a director's taken me down a path that I would never have gone, down. like, I would, like, you honestly want me to do that? Uh, you know, they temp, they, they put in music as the temporary music. Yeah, um, yeah. And then it's your job to, you know, do, to figure out what it is about that temp that, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that you either need to, you know, be inspired by or emulate or what's working or what's not. Um, and I've, I've been led down some paths that I thought were just wrong. <laughs> and and uh, even, you know, honestly on Ginny and Georgia, but what was, what's interesting is that in the end product watching it, I found that uh, it was a cohesive vision and, you know, and it really just underscores the fact that we're here to serve the director's vision. And sometimes, you know, the director has something and it may feel wrong to us, but it actually is, you know, it doesn't matter because it, there's not, it's not really about wrong or right. It's about supporting a vision. Yeah. yeah. Um, Man, I, you feel the same way. I'm sure you feel the same way. Well, yeah. And I mean, I just want to take like a brief moment to like shout out to the producers, Sarah Lampert and Deb Fisher of that show who like, I mean, it's been <laughs> wild watching watching this show since it's come out. Just yesterday, I got a write up in Forbes for, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but it is, as of today, it is the longest, it is the longest Netflix show to be number one, beating Tiger King. It's been 28 days it's been the number one show on Netflix. And- um, I know. It's Longer just, than it, any show in their history of ratings. Yeah, since yeah. they've been doing that. And it's just like, Oh my God. I mean, they, Sarah and Deb, like they just knew how to make something that resonated with people. And that, that was pretty obvious to us while we were working on it. Um, that like it had a far reaching audience, like it had the right, um, the right sort of variables, uh, in, in, you know, or like the right chemicals to make the solution that like would just, you know, it has sort of the right amount of the right amount of, um, humor and intrigue and it oh, sort of like it touches on cultural issues and it raises questions and one thing that I've really enjoyed um I'm like a big reddit nerd and like uh <laughs> I have been for like yeah, those years. people okay got <laughs> and it. like and and there's this Ginny and Georgia subreddit it's like kind of small but mighty and I I like enjoy sort of like lurking on there mm. and seeing the discussions people are having like I honestly I don't care what their opinions are if they're like i hate Ginny or like george is a bad mom it's like i just love seeing the reaction it gets out of people and that like there's these strong reactions these characters get and i mean that to me is like the ultimate um the ultimate sign that sarah and deb just like crushed it with like the show because it's just sparking conversation but um another thing i wanted to say about what lily just said and this relates back to how I was, um, how I mentioned before, like, I'm excited to hear her answers so I can hear more about, you know, her process and, and that too. Is like what, what you're saying about supporting things and wanting to support things. Like I'm very much coming from that same uh, principle from a different, completely different angle, which is that um, as a jazz pianist, I'm like a lifelong jazz pianist. So I started playing jazz piano at age six, lessons all the way, yeah, through college. Um, th there's a, a thing in the function of a, of a pianist in a jazz band uh, will do something called comping, which is a, a sort of a shortening of accompaniment. It's kind of like the saxophones or the vocalist or the trumpet, like they have the melody. And what you're doing on the piano is you're like contextual, you're playing the chords, but you're contextualizing, you're listening really closely. And um, I actually wrote my college essay to Berkeley about this, the relationship between comping and jazz and scoring and film. Oh, that's it's, all about, it's all about making like this other thing 
sound good, look good, feel good. I mean, I've been told a lot of times when I was studying jazz piano from people being like, Hey man, like if you want to, if you want a gig for life, make like the band leader sound really good when he solos, you know, you just like, you and basically like the same principle. That Louis uh, said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I found that. I mean, I just think that's great. We're sort of coming at that same thing from different angles. Yeah, totally. So, ben, I want to, so uh, I want to ask another question. So Ben, mm. explain jazz to people. <laughs> you know it's a complicated, people, 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 people say all shit about it. Jazz gets beaten up in pop culture. It breaks yes. my heart. Um, yeah. Jazz is, well, I mean, the, the cliche yeah. thing jazz is, both, is. Jazz, <laughs> jazz is American classical music. I mean, that, that's like what some yeah. people say. But the truth is, <laughs> Jazz is one of the most American things that's ever been made. I mean, it's an amalgam of all of these different cultures that were brought here. And it, it comes from like, like deep in the soul. And it is the first, really the first mainstream improvisational music, which is pretty much all music now. I mean, even pop music where none of the musicians are improvising, you'll still hear vocalists in the background riffing or, or various, I mean, all the musicians who were recording it, they didn't have anything written out for them. They, were, they are improvising their parts. I mean, jazz is basically the nexus point between traditional music and popular music that we, an American popular music that we all know today, hip hop and, and pop and rock and, and all of that stuff. Um, and now, now that my history lesson is over, um, why is it relevant to you as the listener is it's that um, it exists in the moment. It's, it's living, breathing art. And it, and it does that in a way that no other style of music can do. I highly recommend that people go hear live jazz because that's the best way to experience it. Yeah. What you're watching when you watch live jazz is you're watching a conversation between musicians in a really special way that doesn't really happen. Um, and it is a language that we're speaking with each other. Um, the fact that I could walk into a jam session and call a tune and everyone else will know it and we'll play it together, you know, and, and we'll, we'll be listening to each other and we'll basically spontaneously come up with a whole arrangement, you know, from looking at each other and communicating and, you know, nods and stuff like that. It's just, it's really special. I'm even getting goosebumps just talking about it. I'm so <laughs> glad you asked me this because it's so close to my heart, you know, jazz is. Yeah, I, I know, and, and, I, and I miss <laughs> live stuff, right, Lily? And I was just going to add to that, um, uh, you know, improvisation, it also exists. And I'm not a jazz player per se, although I've studied some jazz, but where I find jazz, uh, you know, it's the, the spirit of jazz is everything he's talking about. It's, it's, it's liquid, fluid, uh, spontaneous composition. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, there's a degree of, of uh, it's kind of a, it's almost like a prayer in a way, you know, you really it's spiritual. Yeah. It's spiritual because you don't know what's going to happen next, but you have to be ready for it. Um, and, uh, and, but I, and I come at it from, uh, from classical tradition, um, Western classical tradition where cadenzas and concertos would be, you know, written out, but originally they were improvised, but I grew up uh, playing in supporting my mom who was a singer songwriter and just learning how to uh you know play by ear i've got uh good ears so i was able to just jump in and and fluid and be fluid with him uh, with people what i'm getting at is that uh, i was lucky enough to tour and play with with herbie hancock and herbie hancock, and i hello. and i asked him <laughs> And I asked him, because he had been doing it at this point for uh, 60, you know, 50, he's been playing, you know, performing for yeah. 50, 60 yeah. years, right? And, but he still has this, like, this exuberance when he gets on stage. And I asked him, Herbie, how do you keep your enthusiasm for doing this? And he said, because I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what's next. I don't know what's going to happen. And that, to me, was the spirit of jazz from what I got from him. Yeah, and I, I mean, realize that's how to fall in love with. That's to to, to fall in love with to to be so, uh, to be so in the, the so present and so in touch with your your ability to to express yourself musically that you can jump off a cliff and be thrilled about it and just and to to really to to embrace and fall in love with the un unknown, 
Um, mm. And to me, that's the, the spirit of jazz. And that's what I love about it. That's what keeps me thrilled. Uh, I, I've done the tours where I played the tracks and every, every measure was scripted. And it just, it's, it, it can be, it's soul deadening. If mm. you're really, you know, if you come from, you know, a background like Ben and, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're in love with the unknown, uh, then, then jazz is that spirit, I think. And I, was told, I was told by several people that I've interviewed who are in different fields. I mean, I feel from Tony Basil to Ed Asner. I mean, I've interviewed people who are like in the business a long time. And when I ask them how they stay in the business, and how they, almost like Willie's question, how are you so enthusiastic? I mean, you've been doing this for 8,000 years. Like, how do, you, how do you continue? And they all say something similar. And what she's saying, but he said it in the sense that stay childlike. Mm -hmm. about it. That's really what you just described. When you're a child, I jumped off of roofs, I climbed trees. You know, yeah, you're I, not thinking about consequences. No, I say <laughs> skateboarded down the hills, skid my knees, still got up and did it again. Like that's kind of that whole thing of the un being not fearful of the unknown. We're adults, we know what can happen. So that clouds all of that because we're, you, you know, and when you're a creative, you have to kind of get rid of that, exercise that, yep. extricate yourself from that, to let back in that childlike innocence because you don't know what's gonna happen next when you go create, you don't know what's gonna come up. Whether, whether you're a painter or a dancer or a musician, we'll be open to it, right, Lily? You gotta be, you gotta uh, dare to suck. Yes. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. that, that's a perfect tie-in. One of my favorite quotes, my dad used to tell, told me this when I was a, a little kid, that's from uh, Coleman Hawkins, a, a very, a famous old, pretty old school jazz sax player. And he said, uh, if you don't make mistakes, you ain't trying. Mm -hmm. I always really liked that one. I mean, he, I remember he told me that when I was, I mean, I, I was like nine or 10 and, and was, and I was playing a, like a recital with my jazz band in the little jazz program, I think when he told me that. Okay, 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 so Ben, I have to ask you this because I'm like, okay, so, when I was when I was uh, five years old, my mother got me lessons. Miss Pappy was my teacher. She was eight thousand years old. <laughs> uh, she was my, she was I mean she was old. She was my piano teacher and my older sister Lauren. We both took piano lessons together. I took it for five years and I so I play piano and I have, I have my keyboard somewhere. My big my golden microphone's right back there uh, that I use for stuff. But I have a, <laughs> I have a keyboard. So, but anyway, um, and that took I took cello uh, ah. in junior high school. Cool. And I did that for I did that for you. I tried clarinet, didn't work. I was like, I don't want that. I didn't want to do that. But I did cello. I did, I did, I did a little bit of violin. Didn't care for it. I like cello better. I did that for three years. Um, but it was all for me just trying stuff out. I kind of liked it. How do you how did you know at five, six years old <laughs> it's a jazz? Like, I mean, like, was that something that was played in your house? That's because I remember my earliest memories of music, I'm a little older than you are. Uh, were Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Joan Baez. But when my, when my mother was playing, you know, Donovan and Bob Dylan, I mean, those were things I was hearing. And I remember those albums when I was like two or three years old. I remember and liking that music, that folk music. The kind of, how, I mean, how was jazz and entering into your life? I was, yeah, how did, I mean, that, that I, it was played in my house. My dad was a, uh, was a huge jazz fan. And he even, um, he was, uh, I think he ran like the radio station at Harvard when he went to Harvard. Uh, oh, wow. And um, and and uh, he like recorded all of these great jazz musicians. He had he has like some really cool bootlegs. Wow! But I um it was played in the house, and I definitely know that it's it's a big thing we connected. My father's no longer with us, but it, it's a big way that that he and I connected. Mm. Um, so I'm sure that motivated me when I was a little kid. But uh, the big reason, and this is a, kind of a theme in my life when it comes to stuff, is just super lucky <laughs> and, the, and the thing that's super lucky is i grew up down the street from a, a jazz piano teacher who who's very charismatic befriended my parents just as a neighbor his name's harvey finstein shout out to harvey finstein i think oh, he's hi, harvey. and uh and he um he specifically taught jazz piano and uh i think the story goes something like my mom was I was six years old and, and, and she was like, Hey, I'm thinking of starting Ben with piano lessons next year. And he was like, bring him over now, whatever. Six, six <laughs> years old is fine. And then I think once it got going, I was the youngest in my family. I really, I think I took to uh, having a thing that I was good at um, as the youngest. And then once I got to around age nine, 
I was playing in, in bands with kids who are three, four, five years older than me. And when you're a little boy, hanging out with the older kids is like the coolest thing you can do. Uh, so I think that also further help, you know, I, I have, as you can tell, I put a little bit of thought into this because it is, it is a little rare to, um, be able to find something that you click with as a musician. There's a lot, most people do cycle through different instruments yeah. and start yeah. with classical and then they do jazz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so I'm just, it's just very lucky. Okay. I guess, but, okay. That's okay. so, that is such a, uh, an adorable image to think of you as a- <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, so little Ben, little Ben. Yeah. 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 But, 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 but Lily though, don't worry about Lily. You're, I heard you were a, a prodigy of sorts yourself. So, I mean, how, how early were you doing music? Well, my mom used to joke, my mom was a comedian and she used to joke that I learned to play violin in the womb and it was very irritating. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I had a dream I could play violin at seven and for my eighth birthday, my mom, uh, we rented a violin. Um, we were on welfare, so we couldn't afford to buy anything, but we, she rent, we rented a violin and, um, and she got me a teacher. And the day that I got my violin, she wrote a song in G major. So, so I could play open strings with her wow. without having, without knowing how to play, but yeah. just so I could jam with her right away. And the lyric to the song was so special. It was, um, all my life, I've waited for all my life to feel this feeling I'm feeling now. So preciously, you started to play with me. Darling daughter, you're my musical pal. And playing the song with you is what heaven is to me. I praise the Lord for this gift of harmony and for all the times my heart's been satisfied. There's nothing deeper than a mama's pride. Oh. Um, and uh, I know. Right? So cute. Um, oh my God. Uh, and uh, so I, I credit that really, you know, like the first the first uh experience with music especially on violin which normally takes you know five years before you can sound good you know it's yeah, not, no, i mean no. with all due respect piano you can play a note i mean yes. you've got to be a great piano player but uh, <laughs> but you know you don't have to worry that it's in tune um hopefully or there's nothing you can do about it um but um i that that song lyric just uh, got something in my eye. Uh, anyway, oh, um, that's so, so, cute. That's so cute. Uh, I love that. but uh, so but so the gift of of being given the sense of jamming on the you know the first day, it, you, I can't even. It, it's an immeasurable gift, uh, and I'm sure it it affected my ability to just jump into a situation. I just say yes to things without even you know like I'll I'll figure it out. Um, and you and, grew up the same way. I'm the same way. So sure, I'll, I'll say yes. We'll figure it out. It'll all work out. Yeah, it'll all work out. Um, and uh, which is part of, uh, you know, it's a cool, uh, you know, when when Ben asked me to join him uh, to to pitch on this series uh, on Ginny and Georgia, uh, you know, I said, well, I have to be honest. I've not done TV before. You know, I mean, I you know, I've certainly gotten films done in crazy you know, Hunger Games situations, uh, but, uh, but, t but, you know, I'll be relying on you. And he said, all right, no, but I love that. I love that thing. So I just, you know, well, right on, let's do this. So I'm, um, thank you again, right. Ben. Okay, so, for... Well, how'd you guys hook up and how'd you guys meet? Um, so my, uh, my mentor, this guy named Tree Adams, uh, he was my boss for like five years. I worked on stuff with him. I mean, I really cut my teeth working with him. That's where I got all my TV experience, basically. Gotcha. I mean, I wasn't the composer, but I was like in his music department. I was helping him out and I got to know that rhythm and, uh, and, and really got to sort of like understand the whole situation. It's kind of hard to explain um, with uh, like, you know, working on a TV show, there's like a whole like political thing going on. It's just anything with Hollywood and all that stuff. So that was a yeah. great, anyway, um, shout out to Tree Adams, very important guy to me. Um, and so uh, he was playing a gig with his band and I would always come and, and hang and usually sit in on keys, whatever. And, uh, and Lily was there too. And cause she knew him. How did you, I don't know. I, don't, I actually don't know how you met Tree, but it was, I, I, I know Tree. Oh, you know Tree? You know, we, uh, you know, I know Tree. Do you know Tree? 
<laughs> I agree. Uh, it sounds like a the premise of the beginning of a movie. Yeah, exactly, uh, so, exactly. Yeah, so Trey Adams, yeah, I, he, uh, I, we have a mutual friend, somebody that I went to college with, and, uh, but I guess we just kind of know each other from around. But he hired me to play and sing for him on a couple of shows, right. yeah. and um, and then also I did a guest spot on Californication with my band. We talked about this. We both were on uh, Californication as, oh my as goodness. screen musicians. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So Tree is that was one of the composers for Californication. Okay. Okay. Um, and so uh, anyway, he was playing, he had a gig. Uh, I was there to sit in as I always was and hang out because I knew a lot of the people and, and Lily was there sitting in too. And, and we both played together. And then uh, we just, we got to know each other there and we just kind of kept in touch a little bit. And um, yeah, then, then when this opportunity yeah. came, I mean, when, with Ginny and Georgia, like, so the, so the creator, Sarah is a very old dear friend of mine. Um, okay. We went to high school together and this is a whole other thing. Wow. Like I have, I, uh, various characters in the show are based on people I know, and we can talk about that. Oh, how fun. Oh, how yeah. funny. <laughs> but, um, uh, but, uh, uh, she had told me early on, like, you know, this is a very female project. And what, actually, even before that, I re she gave me the script to read before she sold it to Netflix, just because we were friends and I read it. And I remember saying to her, I would use female voice to score this like wordless female voice. Um, as like a color as an instrument yeah, um, yeah and then like two years later uh part of it was that she was like well this is a very female project like we want to you know um involve as many women as possible but a bigger part of it was really like just aesthetically um having a, a female vocalist who was a composer who could put that use her voice as an instrument on, in the score as part of the sound of the show was really important to me um, and so Lily was is kind of like the perfect fit for that um, because she's a composer, but she also has a beautiful voice and a way of. I think you have a real style, Lily, in terms of how you use your voice as an as a scoring instrument. Um, that really I think. Thank you. I, I think of my viol My voice is like the fifth string on a violin in mm -hmm. a way, um, and I love. Uh, I've uh, you know, and I come from the classical world, so when I think of, you know, like there's there's. La, 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 you know, like, you know, like little, it, I, I, for comedy, it, I just love to be um, playful with, you know, with, it, with Whimsical. lilting melodies and things mm -hmm. like that. So this seemed to lend itself well to that. But, uh, but I just, you know, it's all music to me. So, you know, everything, this, you know, my head is a, is an instrument, uh, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the, 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 uh, it's all music, so yes. But anyway, go on, Ben. Well, I mean, yeah, that's mostly the story of how we ended up doing the show together. Um, and uh, I think that what you just this was that you so you reached out to you said Lily, you have this project. I said, yeah. So my 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 dear friend uh, has this show, and um, they're looking for a composer right now. And I know that you know they're sort of interested in, in me or I'm interested in it I have a connection to it but you know I I, I think like it, it was also clear to me that like I, I just also didn't think that I would get it on my own I mean it, 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 it was sort of a combination of things like it will serve the project better um, and like you know, I, it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I have a tendency to like to work with other composers co-composing. It's not necessarily that common um, for, for people oh, okay. to be co-composers on multiple shows with different people. Um, yeah. But I don't know, I just really like, I like the energy of, of co-composing with people. Like I have a co-composer on Boss Baby, Ryan Elder, great guy, good friend. Yeah. Um, and uh, and a, it's a great opportunity to learn. I'm sort of a... a I mean, most artists are just always studying, you know, to a degree. Totally. For me, like this is the best way for me to learn is through practice of being on a job. I'm not really like, you know, I've done my fair share of studying scores and stuff, but it's not like my, the best way for me to learn. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it really just kind of, all, all of those things contributed to, to the two of us working together on it. Um, and uh yeah. Did, 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 you guys have, did you guys have to audition? Even though you were, even though you knew Sarah, or did you have to like? Yeah, we were. It, yeah, we had to put in a pitching. Yeah, it was still. I would say that like, um, I would, the relationship. I think the the main thing that it did was it 
it allowed me, who is more known for scoring animated shows, to have an opportunity to be heard for a show that's nothing like that. Because that is the thing that, um, you know, if I didn't know Sarah, I probably wouldn't have been able to make that jump. Right. But of course, right. if I hadn't done those shows and, and earned that my sort of like stripes doing that, um, then nobody would have really considered me as a TV composer because, because as I was kind of saying, like it's sort of its own thing and people want to know that like you have experience meeting those deadlines and being a step ahead and doing revisions, which can be really hard for people who oh, are. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. And um, I, and I, I uh, wouldn't have even been considered for a TV show without Ben because I don't I didn't have those that cred. Um, I mean I've I've delivered I've scored eighteen films, right? Documentaries and narratives, so I can definitely I get it done. But it's a different it's a different mindset uh, to a certain degree. Not so much anymore because uh, especially because people are making it's almost like a ten hour film in a way. Yeah, um, modern television series. Yeah, they really. Uh, the, I, I think now I, you know, the, especially it, it assume, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be doing season two, um, one would hope. Um, but, uh, and I think especially having done a, a, an entire season, I think it'll be interesting to, I wonder, Ben, actually, maybe we can, we should talk about maybe like we should, we could watch all the episodes in one fell swoop to kind of get it, to, to think about it like a 10 hour film. Yeah, yeah, or or you know, read the scripts. That was one thing that I was going to ask. Like, you know, can yeah, we... good idea. By the way, we don't know if there's a second season. We're not right. Yeah, they're, saying they're, they're, they're fully I speculating. I think, I, think I, I think number one show on Netflix for yeah, that'll probably be a second, but probably a pretty good indicator. Um, but yeah, no, I think that that's an interesting point, Lily, about um, knowing the full scope of the thing um, is definitely cool, um, and so. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, I was, well, I was going to, you know, we asked you guys, so I want to I break this down even further. So sorry, folks out there, if I'm getting the weeds on this, but I want to I know musician wise how this kind of works. So, okay, so you got you got it. You got pitched it. Yeah, you got it. You're excited. Now we get to work. So, I mean, so what, so what, are, the, what are the next steps? Do you get scripts first? Do you get to see, you get to see dailies? I mean, what, what, like, what happens when it comes to like, so in this particular case we actually took over for somebody who was on the project yeah i mean this is super common and it's absolutely nothing you know not an indicator of this person at all it, it is almost there's actually a saying that like you're not really a composer until you've been removed from a project i've heard from multiple <laughs> multiple awesome you know older yeah. mentor type people um and it's just like um so that, so that colored the experience a little bit because it was a bit more urgent in terms Quite of- Not a bit. It was much, much, much more urgent. <laughs> like, we started. need this, you know, yeah. yeah. That's true. Like, that's let's, true. This I was, remember, you know- It's like, hello. I mean, it, was, it was urgent. It was yeah, like, the urgent. schedule was bonkers. But here's the other thing, James. COVID happened like two weeks after we got uh, So yeah. that colored the whole thing too. Then all of a sudden we have, you know, uh, you know we're adding- months to the schedule while everybody is adjusting for that um and then also you know with the protests that happened too i i think that that also around the george floyd and everything like that um uh the george floyd um uh, uh situation uh it, it uh i remember that also pushed things too um because you know it was it was hard to get around uh, lily didn't have a studio at her home i think i remember one time lily didn't you like get you couldn't get to your studio or you you had you were I couldn't leave my studio because there were riots outside my studio oh, wow. yeah. so um, and actually speaking of which so then there were riots outside the studio and then uh with covid uh i was sharing an air conditioning system and common areas with other people and we had uh, a couple people there who were not wearing masks oh. and I ended up getting COVID toward like on this 10th episode right in the final thrust of the thing I got COVID I worked right through it I was like and I was I was too uh, I I didn't know for certain I had it but I did I got tested afterwards and <clears throat> wow. uh, and I just didn't want to admit it I just told people you know I'm not a hundred percent I'm not a hundred percent Yes. So, um, so I, we didn't really answer your question, I don't think, which is. Uh, no, 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 don't get in there. This, this, this is the gold right here. Um, so, I mean, so you, so you worked through COVID. I know you had COVID, but you worked through it because, again, 
I heard it, I heard it, has, it affects like breathing and stuff. And you're at hello, yeah. you're a vocalist composer, like you're trying yeah. to like. Oh my I goodness! I got most of my singing out of the way. I only had to do a little bit of singing oh. once I, you know, with with oh. with the inhibit, you know, the the, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. problematic yeah. breathing. Uh, most of the most yeah. of the singing had been done, um, but it was just. Look, okay. I, I'm like I, I get obsessed with, you know, when I'm on a, a scoring project, I don't, I don't sleep. I don't. I just I just kind of. For me, it's it's a completely all-encompassing world, which is why I'm yeah. so grateful that pretty much every project I've worked on has been, you know, has been a fun universe to inhabit for a while. Um, I haven't, I've I've played and sung for other people on horror films, and uh, and I was like pray, I <laughs> like like evil spirits go go to the light, go to the light, go to the light. You know, because it's a very spiritual experience for me. You know, I get I, I inhabit a world and it's kind of like method acting. I mean maybe it goes back to just like to my yeah. acting days. You know, I just I become the project. So um I get so, it Lily. No, Lily, I get it. I yeah. totally get it. I did a project where I was I was scoring a film called Vex. It's a, it's a, um, an independent film that's out doing this festival circuit right now. Um, but I did because I watched because I see I got I got the movie first even before the cast saw it. Oh, wow. um, so I got the I got the movie and so but I was watching it over and over again. I became part of the world. Right. And I right. really did like, to become with these so I'm coming with these original songs to go with these scenes. It was very different. I said than do my own album. It was like right. I'm actually writing to the scene. Right. And my my producers and I are checking the music together. Like so, I started. I mean, I was living. I was living in Vex. I mean, I was in Vex basically. The, yeah. For like you know, for like five months, I was I was literally in this world. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I find interesting about that also is, um, then you meet the actors and you're yeah. like, I already know you. Like we exactly. are exactly yes. Let's talk about this. Yes. I've been, I've been living with you. Uh, you know, I've been responding to you and your mannerisms. Like it's it's very strange. It's a little uh, it's a little stalkery. Yeah, it is a little. You go up to them and yeah, you like if they're famous, you, they're like, you don't know me, but I know you. You get in their <laughs> space know. bubble, like I know yeah. you. <laughs> exactly, and I was I was see, I got a little starstruck in a weird in a weird way the first right, time I met too, them. Yeah. I, did, I, so I brought them on my show. We did an interview because they were about. I mean, that didn't with the cast. I did two separate ones. It was a big cast, and I was like meeting them. I was like I got a little starstruck. I'm like. I saw that scene. You're acting. That scene was so. I mean, like, I'm like, I want to like, and and because they hadn't seen the finished product yet, mm -hmm. I couldn't say certain things either. They didn't even read the scripts. They knew stuff, but like, right. I was like, wait till you see the scene. I mean, like, I I have you know, it was. It was a, you're right. It was very weird. It was like, I I, I know you. Like, I know who. You, like, I don't know no, who's acting, but I know you. I know it's 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 bizarre. It's like <laughs> okay, so, okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so you okay? Well, I'll get back on track. We got no. This is all. This is all the golden stuff right here. But right. Get back on track. So the thing is, so now did you get the whole season at right. once? So because we came in for somebody else, more of it was done than may usually be the case. Uh, we were working to picture. So I think they first sent us the first three episodes yeah. to, to check out before we like really were sure we were doing it. Um, just to talk it through with us after they had already liked our reel and, you know, we talked a little bit more. Um, and then, uh, and then what, ha what usually happens is they'll send you an episode. You'll have what's called a spotting session, um, which is a, like a, a meeting specifically where you watch the film together and um, you have like a big list of all of the music cues and okay, yeah. you sort of watch it go sometimes you might go cue to cue i mean for my animated shows because there's pretty much music the whole time we just watch it down you know and oh, sort okay. of stop it if we want if one of us wants to say something um but like for this it's it's much more because there's so many songs and there's only there's so many silent scenes um you know uh so so we might watch a scene and uh and they'll be like uh we want something here. We don't know what it is. Like maybe it doesn't even have temp music, but like we thought maybe something could go here. We don't know what. And so we're like, cool. We'll talk about how do you want it to feel? Uh, you know, who's, who, whose perspective are we scoring from stuff like that? Which character, um, you know, what are we trying to communicate to the audience? What are we trying to conceal to the audience? Like if it's like a misdirect type of thing. Um, and, uh, 
And the same conversation happens if the temp is garbage, <laughs> you know, if it's just like not good, if it's just something that's thrown in there that nobody really likes, you'll still sort of mute it and watch it, watch it down. Um, if, if they like something, that the temp that's in it, it's really a matter of like, what do you like about this? Um, you know, what is it saying that we like? But, but the question, like, how do you want this to feel sort of comes up a lot. Um, okay. So uh, if it's not obvious and this show, just by and large, was not obvious. <laughs> like, it was not. They really had. It was a, it's a it's real a hybrid. Very unique, complicated tone to yeah. and it's a tightrope to walk, um, and and so like it it was a lot of of conversation about that, um, and and yeah, it made it challenging. Frankly, you know, it was a job. It was a challenging job. I mean, it was with great reward because we're you know we're very proud of it, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not uh, doing an animated show is a lot more straightforward, even though there's more music and there's all this sort of acrobatics you have to do music yeah, yeah, yeah. to hit all of the actions. Um, it's more straightforward. The intentions are very obvious. Um, whereas with a show like this, you might score the scene in a way that you find very beautiful, but it could be just like, you know, too melodramatic for them. And then it's a matter of finding the... Um, finding, getting inside uh, the producer's head, finding out what is melodramatic to them and like what are the, learning their languages, which can be really hard because it's difficult for people to, because they don't, they don't know musical vocabulary and they shouldn't have to, you know, that's not, they're not the composer. So it comes down to sort of like, um, as I, you know, was talking about music as a language earlier, it's sort of like, you have to be the, you have to speak, you have to be a translator, you know, or an ambassador sort of, I think this is where uh, being an actor also is helpful because you can ask the director or the creator of the show to to speak dramatically to you. You know, how do you you know how do you want how do you want your audience to feel? Uh, you know, it's what is the feel, but also how do you how do you want your audience to feel after this? That's a question I sometimes ask uh, directors. Uh, uh, you know, do you want? And then I watch things and gauge my own emotional responses, my own physical responses. Sometimes we'll watch, I'll like, I'll watch a scene and I'll, without music and I'll feel something and then I'll put my music to it and then it'll, and if it enhances the feeling, I'll, to me, that's a good, you know, that's, that's my, I, I've done a good job. Uh, sometimes you can add music and it takes away the feeling and then, yeah. you know, you've, you've overstated it. Uh, yeah. And what was, con what was challenging about this job was that, you know, I think we both did what we know to be successful score, you know, like Ben has his process. I have mine, you know, this is okay. Uh, and like, there were several times in this process where I was like, Ben, I think I really like, I really, I feel really happy with this. I hope they like it. And it comes back. We hate this. Like the thing that, that, that I thought was like, you know, so, so special so spot on it was like yeah it's too on the nose uh and it's like that's not how can you what what are you what are you talking but, about but uh, they were also somewhere you said that and they they loved it like the oh, end yeah. of episode six if you guys out there are watching the show check out episode six the cue at the end when george is burning the photos and stuff oh, that yeah. was just like the lily hayden special man like she just she that was like a one take you know she she, she just felt that scene and turn that in and like everybody loved it. And it's the thing that we hear about most from fans now is people being like, what's this song? Um, so, okay. you know, there's, Actually, there's like, both sides of that coin. There's a, there's a longer version of it that, that I was hoping anyway, but yes, thank you. Yeah, the, the uh, full but, version is gonna be on the soundtrack. Comes up. Yeah, soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there's no soundtrack. It's Bring it all back. All right, so, okay. So you get, you get, you see, look at you, you spotting everything. Now, for you two, on this project, because again, you guys and other things, on this project, how did you actually come together? For I each mean, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, we, we would start out <laughs> by assigning cues to different people, like to one or the other of us. I mean, in the very early phase, we got in the studio together and like sort of jammed out our way through some cues. Um, but we didn't get to do that so much. I mean, there's really only but maybe those were important. Those were important sessions, I think, True. because uh, that's where we sort of came up with 
in a way like our sonic palette yeah. uh, where it was like you know uh like, yeah, I like this sound. I, I like, I don't like this sound. I like this sound. Well, what if we did X, Y, Z here? How do we navigate the comedy? And uh, to me, in the first episode, that uh, the, uh, the scene where Georgia goes into the fancy shop where she's buying the purse, um, yeah. there's a there's a cue there that that was like one of the first things that we tackled together. The peak and, comedy cue for this score in my, in my feel. Yeah, I love but, it. I love it, and it was also what it just like it got the right pacing. It was cute, but it didn't step on things, and it was really it was like I heard things, Ben heard things, and we sort of we were we were just playing together. It was it was just really yeah, playful, and to me, and and that really set the tone for me for a lot of the comedic scenes throughout the the whole season. Yeah, wow. and, and that piece specifically, like it's very simple, but it's one of my favorites because it's one of the only cues that we got to do together like that. Um, which is which is cool, and I hope that we like once we're both vaccinated, we're planning on getting together more. Um, yeah. Sort of like. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we kind of split them up, and then when the revisions came in, we'd sort of do anyone would do revisions on anyone else's cue. So we sort of oh, ended up collaborating in terms. So a lot of the cues like have both of our um, both of our energy on them, even if one of us did like the first draft maybe the other person did the second draft or maybe I'll do something and I'll be like, Hey, I'd love like some, some vocals right here or some violin right here, or actually shout out to Lily's husband, Itai, who is a fantastic instrumentalist who played a, on a lot of the, this music. Like he played guitar and bass and, and, and sang uh, even. Uh, we, uh, yeah, he was, he, he brought, he has additional, uh, additional composition on a few of these, uh, important cues. He brought, he brought a lot of the, um, um, Let's say sexy. a lot of sexuality. It was very, here's the sexy, uh, like Woo! there's a, a scene when uh, Georgia and Ginny's dad uh, get together. I don't know if you, did you watch the whole scene? Yeah, I, I did, I did, yes. yes. So, uh, so, uh, so that sexy stuff. And then when, uh, or I don't want to give away anything if people haven't right, exactly. seen it. Exactly, we're going to try. That's why I'm commenting too much. I, I, I did, I uh, did. But the, there are a couple of sexy scenes uh, where, uh, where you hear uh, my husband and I'd have to, you know, I'd lure him into the studio uh, late at night with some tequila and promises of, of uh, <laughs> whatever he wanted. <laughs> um, and he'd like, so there were a lot of late night sessions. My, my studio was more like the hip hop studio. It was like, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, that's my right, girl. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right, so, so, I, so I like that you guys were kind of just, I mean, you may have a sign beginning who does what, but then in the end, it's the where we're best, where we're, where we're worked on the, yeah. the best. I mean, especially if it was a top down, if it was a total rewrite. I mean, there were situations where both of us sort of saved the other person <laughs> because yeah. like, you know, where, where I, I had, you know, killed myself on this super long cue that I thought was perfect. And, and, you know, it didn't, it didn't make, it didn't, uh, 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 you know, it wasn't what they were looking for. And then, I'd just be like, Lily, I need, I need you to try. Like I'm tapped out. And then she would come in and, and vice versa, you know, the other way around <laughs> too. So. Yeah. Usually we would uh, like, uh, it, we would, you know, give it our best, you know, we both gave our all on this. I'm there was sure. no, you know, yeah. like, you know, all right. So here's a revision. Sometimes it's total rewrite. All right. I will. I really feel this. I really want to go back and do this. Uh, you know, sometimes there were as many, you know, as, how many rewrites are we talking? Are we, are we really getting into the weeds? Yeah, yeah I'm not going to do that up far, but yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it was also like a, a big challenge for it was like, you know, COVID was a challenge for us working together. It was also a challenge for us working for the producers. And, and it wasn't until we introduced uh, something called Streambox, which is a thing Netflix is using a lot um, for oh, okay. video. It's sort of like a way for everybody to watch the same video in real time and talk about it. Um, as if oh, you're what? in the room as because it, normally as in the room. that was a huge game changer for us because yeah. then we could then we could um instead of doing a bunch of different versions where like we were tweaking things once we got it in the zone we could get on a session with the producers and sort of like and talk about talk about it in real time play it for them and like show share our screen and be like okay what is the instrument that's like bothering you and like how can we you know we would do things like we She'd be like, I like this. I like this three second part. Let's put that over here again. Or like, you know, it, it sort of allowed allowed them uh, to be part of the, the music making process 
um, which I think was oh, okay. was good for everybody, and 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 uh, and really like in a lot of cases made uh, made it even better, you know. Definitely, definitely, and also normally pre-COVID times, you would just invite the director yeah, you know, over, over the to the house, you know, over to the studio. Thing, yeah. You know, but be, it, because we couldn't do that, this was this was a lifesaver. And I think, and and should we be lucky enough to have a season two, uh, it'll that would you know hopefully we'll be able to invite them over by then. But uh, but at least this will be a real lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I, I miss being in a studio. The, the last time I was in the studio, was, in terms of music, mm -hmm. I was bringing a song with my friend Pete Mills, and that was end of 2019. It was like, it was like the, it was like we were working on a song, it took us a couple of months, because we were doing it on the weekends. We, I was, we were busy on the weekends. It took a couple, over a couple of months, I want to say like October, November was the last time I was actually inside a recording studio to like work on a song. I miss that. We go back and forth. We co-wrote the song. It was based on something that I had written. It's called uh, "Lost and Found." It's coming out this year. <clears throat> oh wow! Congratulations. Um, yeah, we sing in a key I never sang before, oh. which was something to my. I, I, I love that when you're in a studio where they pump you up and you kind of try this. You know, let's do this. And I'm like, you. I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. I mean, it was a little rough. I'm like, I have a deep, I have a deep voice. I have a very baritone based voice, and yeah, we sing cover registers higher. Uh, for this song, he was like, "We did a." Um, and I'm getting to the weeds, folks. If you're not into music out there, sorry, but um, I'm a fan of the Pixies and um, and the whole loud, soft sound. And Nirvana did it too with us uh, with like Teen Spirit. Um, so I, we want to do a song like that, where my song goes loud and soft, loud and soft. So my vocal had to reflect that a little bit. And he pushed me. I mean, like it was just like, "Okay, James, you can do it. I mean, this song, you're, you're 10 years old and you're mad and come on, you can do it. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying to do it, but but no, I was afraid the end. I mean, the song sounds great. I mean, in the end, but I was like, but I miss that whole, when you're in the studio together, that's kind of like, you just, I, things like that happen. So I know for both of you, it must have been just this interesting process of not being together mm -hmm. in a studio. Yeah. Still ideas must be very interesting for you guys yeah and i mean we would do stuff like we would get, like get on facetime and sometimes or be on the phone and try and like play things through that and like you know we've kind of found found like rugged ways of uh of replicating that but you know it was it is kind of sad we didn't get to do that on season one you know it's obviously like nobody yeah, being all, just well, it sucks yeah the cool thing though is i think it's a real testimony to how compatible we are as uh as collaborators and friends that we were able to do this as successfully as we did given the fact that we literally and to be quite honest we uh did we did not really we had never really worked yeah we had never before. worked like you this know. right or right we were just right. kind of like we barely know, knew each other playing together <laughs> on like a jam session playing together on a jam session is not the same thing and i mean yeah. you know, no. it's yeah. just like uh yeah it, it, it's it it was uh <clears throat> I mean, Lily's like, she's my work sister. You know the saying, work wife? I never liked it. Yeah, she's my work sister. Like, Lily, you're my work yeah. sister, and I'm your work brother. We're brothers. Yeah. But no, but, that, right but see, but I like, I like that because of this, a thing. Sometimes you don't have to know each other for a million years, and then you, I have folks I've done collaborations with that weren't as good, and I've known them forever, and other ones that were newer. It's just, it's energy. We're all energy. And I think it's yeah. what it is. Your energies matched up yeah. for this project, and that's what made it so work so well i mean it, it could be anything right you could be somebody off the street and do it again oh we're great i mean it's like but you don't have to know each other i think sometimes and that can help of course and probably as you guys continue to do more stuff it'll help mm -hmm. but who knows the beginning it could be just you guys just i mean just the energy's matched it was and this project there's a lot of yin and yang going on with us even just literally like she's up all night working and i'm up all day working <laughs> like the, even just as simple as that she works all night and i'm like in bed by 10. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my God, so funny. Oh my God, it's so funny. It's like it, it, and it, <laughs> sometimes she'll call night. me. She'll call me at like eleven o'clock at night and like want to talk talk business, and I'm like snuggling with my girlfriend. <laughs> she's, she's like, Sorry, I try not to. I try not it. to be too, you know. Well, you know, in the thick of it, though, you know, when we're in the thick of it, it's it's hard to. Uh, you know, it's hard to do the work-life balance thing when you're really in the thick of it like this. No, and I know I tell all the time there is no balance. I mean, just there just isn't. I and mean, you have to, you have to, if you have a partner, you got to talk to them and mm -hmm. really work that out because it's just there. When you're in the middle of a major product, like you said the fast pacing, 
the volume of work you have to produce and come up with. And being creative is you got to be creative. I mean, you got you got you got to be creative and be yeah. able to create. And if you have somebody, you know, going, well, where are you? And at you know, seven o'clock, we got that. I mean, like you can't. It's hard to do. Hard. That. It is, yeah. Hard to do that. yeah. That's why I get this person's understanding. I'm so lucky that I have uh, such a brilliant uh, partner. Uh, he and I also have a band together called Opium oh. Moon. Um, and okay, I like that day, Opium Moon. Well, thank like you, that. thank you. Well, we wanna... Opium Moon. She uh, we, uh, we just put out uh, an EP and uh, okay. putting out a new single uh, next month that, uh, Ben, I'm, I'll send it to both of you. It is one of the most fun pieces of music I've ever been a part of. Right. Uh, and I just love it. Anyway, it's, it's our follow-up uh, from our our follow-up record uh, to our Grammy winning debut, which was last year. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, but so yeah, well, he and I have a, a beautiful collaboration and he's got a great band uh, called Maytar. Well, he gets it, he, he totally gets yeah, it. Yeah, no, he all. totally gets it. But even so, he's like, you know, we, we I try to carve out at least, you know, where we don't schedule. I My minimum is to try to have at least one day off a week where I don't schedule okay. something else so I can have a day with my husband. That's smart. That's not, not right. I said, it's also good for your health too to have a day off. So yeah. even your passion can wear you out. Mm -hmm. um, so you gotta yeah. Like you got to, we got to work it out somehow. And so I'm assuming Ben, you have must have must have an understanding girlfriend. Must know what's going on. What you do? Yeah, I mean, you know, and she's she is my girlfriend is like the most creative person I've ever met. Like there, there, there is like basically not a single art discipline that she doesn't have a hand in. She she actually is a musician. We play. She played. My, we played a jazz gig together uh, every Sunday. Um, up, right up until the pandemic for like five years. I'll probably keep going back to it. I mean, um, so she's a jazz drummer. Well, I, I get it, Ben. I get it, Ben. Yeah. It's like, she's, you know, she's like, uh, she, she's got a million projects too. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so I would say she's actually busier than I am right now. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just the two of us. Like when we're, when we're um, together, we just try to shut it, shut it out, turn the phones off. That's the main yeah. thing. Just turn the phone yeah. off and that. That solves like ninety percent of the problem. It does, right? It like does. A few hours a day, um, yeah. and uh, and so it's like, um, yeah, like I, I think I think we we both have the same sort of challenges because we're both. It comes from a place of just being really excited about what you're doing, that you want to do it all the time. It's it's not like a ball and chain thing, like with your work. It's just kind right. of like, I want to be uh, focused on this and I want to be available for it, um, but you know the things you want in the moment are, aren't always the healthiest things for you. You know, even if you want That's work, true, you know, I guess. I guess <laughs> you're right about that. I don't. I mean, I'll tell you both. I think I, you probably agree with this. I couldn't imagine anything else. I mean, I'm, I just, I've been in this business for so long. I can't yeah. imagine anything else. I mean, this is can this I tell, it. Can I tell you a joke? Uh, uh, there's a, a guy, uh, just 90 year old man. I think I may have told you this, Ben. 90 year old man works at the circus cleaning up the elephant shit at the circus. And uh, he's 90 years old. And uh, this young guy is walking out at the end of the night, sees this 90 year old cleaning up the elephant shit. And he says, Man, you're 90 years old. Why didn't you retire? He says, What? And give up show business? <laughs> That's funny. I love it. <laughs> what I love else? it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I just feel I like, um, I, again, like the being lucky is sort of like a, a theme, especially when it comes to like career stuff. And I just, I feel super lucky that I figured this out so young. Um, yeah. I figured out when I was 20 years old that I wanted to go into film scoring, that it was like the right combination of like my skills and my interests. And I had like just enough contacts that I thought I could get a foot in the door if I like really was one of the top people in every situation um and then you know around that age is when i like wrote that berkeley essay and applied to berkeley and uh and and i pretty much always like had this straight path um which like especially for people in my generation is just it's just not that common like a lot of people just don't know that at that young an age um and they end up you know figuring it out five years later so I mean, it's not the end of the world it's just like um, you know, I, I don't think I would I would have been able to uh, to do this um, at this level at this age if I hadn't been lucky enough to just kind of like have the right combination of uh, or, or find out about this thing, this career that was the right 
uh, path for me. So yeah, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's the perfect job for me. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, uh, I came at it in a, uh, on the other side of it as a, so people ask me to, people liked my solo albums and asked me to score their films. And I just said, yes, even though I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and I just started, I just figured it out. And, but I was part of, it was because I was working as uh, part of other composers teams. You know, when you're in the room with, with Hans and his people, you know, and the directors and they're like, kind of like, you see the process. At, at, but, but I didn't ever get to be a fly on the wall as an assistant and I never really got the nuts and bolts. So I still feel like I'm figuring things out now that I wish that I had learned in college or as an assistant. Um, I, I came at it, I sort of jumped in as, as an artist already. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I'm always trying to learn something new. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, I came into my forties. Oh, wow. So I, um, I always, it was always part of my life. I've been writing since I was 10 years old. I, mean, I always, always had, and I was in a band in the nineties called Mangina. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, we, uh, played some, uh, played some rock dances back in the nineties. Mm. Uh, didn't go anywhere. I mean, it was, it was all for fun. It was like, we didn't even go, we were semi-popular in San Francisco. We didn't really do much uh, of that, but coming to it seriously, um, I, I came into my forties and I can't even imagine. I'm so glad, I'm glad I found it for me. It's almost like you found it early. I'm glad I found it period. Right. I found it. Uh, and I had, and for me, it was more about, um, like really staying early, going back to the very beginning, learning how to say yes and not being afraid. And, you know, like you said, you get, you get older, you just know how things can go. You just really know, you just know how things can go. So you're like, oh, I don't, I don't, should I try it? Should I try it? Should I try it? Should I try it? Um, and I was like, uh, now, I, now I'm like, yes, yes. Right on. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad. I touch you guys forever. It's been over an hour. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna be like, what? Uh, you guys have to come back on the show again. It's like, come on okay. another, another so, time. Because you guys, you guys are amazing. You both are amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My new friend. You're amazing. My new friend. Thank you. I you're, think you're, good. yes. Well, let's stay in touch. And thanks so much for having us. And oh, then, my God. Come on, of course. Of course. And I'm going to send you my song that I, the one I talked about, I'm going to send it to you both so you can hear what I, my vocal. What I did. Wonderful. Oh, I'd love to. Hey, and I'll um, send you that song we're talking about too. Please do. So, okay. So it's Brett, it's Ben Bromfield music.com. It's Lily Hayden.com, but it's L I L I H A Y D N.com. Did I say it correctly? You did. Thank you. Yes. yes go there. And also, is it opiummusic.com to you? What's that? Is it opiummoon.com also? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that one too. Okay. So go ahead and check those out. And, and the digital release of the scoring from Ginny and Jordan is coming out to, well, if you, yeah, tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow. So go, so go out there and get it. Like, get Spotify. It. I'm gonna get it. Spotify. 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 I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. So I'm gonna get on Spotify and really listen to it. stream it to death. You like it over and over again. Put it in your background. Just stream it. Stream it. Stream it. Stream it. So. And if that. you also uh, have a chance to check out uh, my my solo album, More Love, uh, comes out yeah. tomorrow as well on Lakeshore Records. And I went to her SoundCloud page. I was listening to, I was listening to Sayonara. I was listening to, uh, and to More Love. Oh, so, wonderful. Thank very, you. Very nice. I liked it very much. And I'm James Loud Jr. You can follow me where all James Loud Juniors are at James Loud Jr. on social media everywhere. And of course, my stuff's on SoundCloud too. Yeah. Um, so everybody, please stay safe. Support the arts. Support the arts. They're very important, starting from elementary school all the way up. That's why I started this show, because I'm all about... If it isn't on the page, it's on the stage, so to speak, thing. I believe that completely. But there are people who are very artistic and creative, and it's very important to our society, to our mental health. It shows that we it helps with math and sciences, helps with English, every, everything. <laughs> Art is important, whether it's music, whether it's composition, music, dancing, singing, acting, whatever it is, support painting, support the arts. And that's all I gotta say about that. See you guys next time. <laughs>